Hello, welcome to the College Admissions Collaborative highlighting engineering and technology virtual college fair. Thank you for joining us. A few quick housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenter at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week, strivescan.com slash cache, and you can access it then. I've gotten the housekeeping stuff out of the way. I'm going to get, get out of the way now and turn it over to our presenter. Once again, thank you for joining us tonight. Great. Thank you, Russ. And thank you all so much for joining us this evening. My name is Megan Murphy, and I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Stevens Institute of Technology located in Hoboken, New Jersey. I really appreciate you taking some time to learn more about Stevens this evening. To start off with a little bit of history, Stevens was founded in 1870 by the Stevens family. The Stevens family were a family of inventors. They were really pushing our country forward at the time. And this idea about innovation, entrepreneurship, really developing new ideas and improving the society in which you are a part is something that is still very much a part of who we are today as an institution. Our campus is actually located where the Stevens family lived. So that, that is very much a part of our rich history. We are an institution of about 3,800 undergraduate students. We are actively growing at Vito about 4,000, which is still small, but a little bit bigger than we are today. So think about 1,000 students in each of the incoming freshman classes. Our average class size is 25 students with a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So if you're looking for that smaller type of community, Stevens might be a good fit for you. Our location is also in Hoboken, New Jersey, which is right across the river from New York City. A smaller city, just a mile by a mile, so also good for someone who wants a city feel in terms of their undergraduate experience, but perhaps not a larger city, while still having access to the opportunities in a city like New York. We have over 30 different areas of study at Stevens, primarily in the STEM fields. I'm not gonna go into detail about every single major, um, but I will highlight some along the way. What's important to note about Stevens in terms of our academics is as an applicant, you do have to indicate a first and second choice program to the institution. And you begin in that major your freshman year, your first semester. A couple notes about that. Undecided is an option. So you can be science undecided or humanities undecided, business undecided or engineering undecided. So you don't have to know exactly what it is that you want to study. You can just have a broader idea. And also, once you get to Stevens, you do have two years to officially declare your area of study. So it's not just that you decide it in your senior year of high school and you're set, you do have some time to explore at Stevens. But we do ask you to think about what it is that you'd like to do um, in terms of a major because you do begin in those courses your first semester at Stevens. You can also take courses across the different schools and colleges. So we have students majoring in engineering, but taking business courses, for example. We have quite a popular entrepreneurship minor. Um, I mentioned that entrepreneurial spirit at Stevens, so students can take coursework in that area if they would like. You also have the option at Stevens to pursue an accelerated bachelor's master's degree program because we do have graduate level programs as well. But again, just for an application standpoint, what's your first choice major, what's your second choice major, but just trying to give you an idea about the broader academic opportunities. We have about 600 students studying within our School of Business at Stevens. Our location uh, proximity to New York City is very popular for these students, gaining many internship opportunities, particularly in the financial district. We have a business and technology program that's quite popular at Stevens. It allows students to combine an area of business with an area of tech. So maybe you're combining economics and computer science or marketing and music and tech. You're essentially choosing something from within the school business and outside of the school business to create that major for yourself. I'll also highlight the quantitative finance program or QF as we call it for short. Not many schools offer this program at the undergraduate level. It is mostly a graduate level program at a lot of other institutions. But quantitative finance is a really good option for a student who's interested in things like finance, mathematics, and computer science, and wants to study something at the intersection of those three. You'll also notice that we have, at the end of some of our majors, the word analytics, accounting and analytics, marketing innovation and analytics. So it's not just about learning the theory, but understanding how it needs to be applied in practice and how ultimately our students will need to use what they learn at Stevens out in the real world. The humanities and arts at Stevens are within our College of Arts and Letters. Our music and technology and visual arts and technology programs are our most popular majors within Cal. And these students do have the option to submit a portfolio as a part of their application process if they'd like. 
We also have literature program and philosophy programs, social sciences, combining areas of studies such as psychology and sociology. You can major in something within the humanities and arts at Stevens, but all students at Stevens, regardless of the area of study that they pursue, will pursue, will take some liberal arts courses. Because regardless of what you major in, reading, writing, developing an argument, defending that argument are important skills to have. The sciences at Stevens really form the backbone of all of our programs. All students are going to take math and science courses while at Stevens. The majors themselves though are smaller programs. So that allows our students to really develop those relationships with their faculty members, pursue research projects, whether it be working with a faculty member in their lab on their project or pursuing your own research, perhaps through a summer experience. Pre-med is also a good option. If you come to Stevens, we prepare our students quite well for that. Um, for that goal if that's what they want to pursue. Students uh, for the 2019-2020 academic year who majored in biology and chemical biology and wanted to go on to medical school, we did have a 100% acceptance rate. We do also have an accelerated pre-medicine program that students apply to in which they would complete a degree with Stevens and their medical school degree in seven years. Computer science is very popular at Stevens. We have both a computer science program as well as a cybersecurity major. Cybersecurity was developed several years ago um, due to increased student interest in this area of study, but also increased need for students out in the workforce to be well versed within this field. Computer science, of course, though, is quite broad in terms of a major, and our curriculum is set up such that in that junior and senior year, students are really able to take elective higher level coursework in areas that they're most interested in and concentrate in areas such as information systems or data structures. The building that we opened up in fall of 2019 on campus, our Gateway Academic Center, is home to our computer science, cybersecurity, and artificial intelligence programs. If you add up all the areas of engineering that we offer at Stevens, this is where most of our students are studying. And you can see that we offer about a dozen different areas to choose from. What's important to note about the engineering programs at Stevens is that they're bachelors of engineering degrees, or BEs, as opposed to bachelor of science degrees that you might see at other institutions. The reason why Stevens is awarding the BE is because regardless of what you ultimately end up majoring in within engineering, you know, whether it be biomedical, mechanical, electrical, all students in the engineering program are taking the same courses those first three semesters at Stevens. So they're getting that core solid foundation in the field before diving into their chosen major. This is obviously really great for someone who's undecided within engineering because our curriculum will naturally allow you to explore the various different areas that we offer. But even for someone who's more sure about what they want to study within the field of engineering, it's still advantageous to have a BE degree because you're typically not only working with one type of engineer. So having a broader understanding of the field is not just going to help you in college, but also beyond. It's also an incredibly hands-on curriculum. We have what we call at Stevens within our engineering program, the design spine. So every semester that you're taking an engineering course at Stevens, you are taking a design class, a very hands-on collaborative project-based work. All of our students at Stevens, regardless of their area of study, will complete a senior design project, so a final full year project. But our engineering students are doing this every semester all along the way. One of the areas that really draws students to Stevens is that opportunity for professional practice. We obviously are teaching our students things inside the classroom that they need to know for their area of study, but also allowing them to then put that into practice out in the real world. About 100% of our students will have some type of professional experience while an undergraduate student. So it's a very popular um, experience to add on to their academics. About 20% of our students will do research. I mentioned earlier, they might be doing it with a faculty member working on one of their projects in their lab, or perhaps um, pursuing their own research project through one of our summer research programs. Internships are popular at Stevens. Our students are pursuing those six to eight week traditional summer experiences between their academic years. Stevens also does have a cooperative education pro program. So co-op is available to students studying within engineering, computer science, and science. And co-op actually takes your time at Stevens to five years. You're doing the first year and the fifth year in the traditional way, taking full-time fall and spring semester classes. And then the three years in between, you're alternating every other semester between going to school full-time and working full-time. So you're still only completing eight undergraduate semesters of coursework, still only paying for eight undergraduate semesters of coursework, it just takes you a little bit longer to do it because you do stop three times to work full time for a semester as opposed to going to school, taking your classes. We do have career advisors to help our students navigate this choice. 
Just as you would be assigned an academic advisor from your freshman year, you will also be assigned a career advisor who will meet with you individually to discuss what your long-term goals are and which type of professional opportunity as an undergraduate might best fit those needs and those goals. We do also have about 10% of our students studying away. We have um, a list of various institutions that we suggest our students travel to and study at um, to make sure that the courses that they take there will transfer back with them to Stevens. So students are having those traditional semester long experiences. Some students are having summer abroad experiences and others might just do a short spring break trip that might be a part of a course that they're taking during that spring semester. So some variety within those study away experiences as well. You should definitely be asking every school that you're looking at, you know, what will the next four years of my life look like, or perhaps five if you pursue cooperative education. But you should also be asking every school you're looking at, and then what? What happens to your graduates? Where do they go from there? Um, because those that time lasts a lot longer than those four years that you'll be at the institution. Stevens students do very well for themselves post-graduation. 95% of our class of 2020 was either employed or enrolled in graduate school full-time six months after graduation with an average starting salary of $77,000 a year. And as you all know, this was a particularly tough year for our students to be graduating and entering the workforce. So the fact that they continue to really have strong placement was something we're very proud of um, as an institution. Our students work very hard and our career center worked very hard to assist them in that process as well. We're 11th in the nation for best career placement, 12th for mid-career salaries, 17th for return on investment. So our students don't just hit the ground running initially, they continue to build on that momentum throughout their careers. Over a thousand companies will recruit Stevens students each year. It's not all academics and uh, outside classroom work though. There is a really robust student life experience on campus as well. We have over 100 clubs and organizations that students can choose from. And at the beginning of each semester, a club and activities fair where students can learn about the different organizations and join the ones that they'd like. We have Division Three Athletics at Stevens. So if you'd like to participate, that's the level we compete at. We also have club and intramural sports as well. 50 plus student performances every year. So if you're into the arts, there are plenty of opportunities for you to explore that uh, at Stevens. We have lots of community service opportunities too. Many different populations students can work with in the Hoboken and New York City metro area. So many students do find time to, to give back as well. We have Greek life. So if attorneys and sororities are of interest to you, you can pursue that as well. Again, between what's going on in your classes, what's happening outside the classroom, there's going to be a lot for you to do at Stevens. Hoboken itself too, being a city, lots of shops, restaurants. So that very much becomes a part of your experience as well. In terms of living at Stevens, housing is provided to students um, during their undergraduate years, but it looks a little bit different depending on your class year. So for example, we have seven residence halls on campus in which our freshman students live, and over 90% of our freshmen do live on campus. Starting in fall of 2022, we will open up our brand new student life and university housing center, which will have a thousand more beds on campus, and that will house our sophomore class. Junior and senior year, if students would like to remain residents of the institution, Stevens actually leases apartments in the city of Hoboken on your behalf. So you're still considered a resident of the institution because you're getting your housing through Stevens, but you have your own apartment. Being a mile by a mile, students can easily walk from any of these apartments to campus. So it's all very accessible. Our campus itself though is a 55 acre traditional campus in the sense that there's an academic quad, residence halls, academic buildings, library, uh, dining hall, all right there for you, but entirely open to the city of Hoboken. Students have options to choose different dining plans as they go about their time at Stevens. And of course, again, those restaurants that I mentioned in Hoboken, you have access to as well. And some of them do even take your duck bills, which is the money you can put on your Stevens ID card. So they're quite accessible in that way as well. I already mentioned our new student housing and university center. You can see the rendering of the image here. Construction is on time for this brand new building. So we're very excited that this will open for students to live in fall 2022. The two towers will be the residential space, but the first three floors are just student life space in general. So more space for our students to hang out, more student clubs and organization meeting spaces, um, a new dining facility, a new fitness center as well. So it will definitely be a building for all students at Stevens. We opened up last year a new student wellness center, which is home to our student health services, student counseling, disability services, and wellness education. So a new space for that was opened um, recently too. And then I also mentioned our new Gateway Academic Center, our newest academic building on campus. 
which while home to computer science and cybersecurity and artificial intelligence, is also open to all students. And many students do take classes within those buildings. That's just where the faculty offices and some of the lab space for those particular programs exist. When it comes to the application process, the most important thing to know is that we do use the common application. So when you get to the point in time in which you are ready to apply uh, to schools, just add us to the list that you may already be applying to with common application schools. The only essay that we require as a part of our application is the common uh, application personal statement that's already a part of that application. We at Stevens don't have any additional short answer or supplemental questions that you need to submit. The real backbone of your application is your official high school transcript. And we look at that transcript in combination with what's known as your school profile or your school report. So when looking at a transcript, we're not just simply pulling a GPA off the sheet and, and making a decision based off that. We're really looking to see what sorts of classes are offered at your high school, what's considered rigorous at that particular place, and how have you taken advantage of those opportunities. We are also looking very closely at the coursework. So we do list on our website recommended coursework for each area of study, because there are certain classes that we do want to see on that high school transcript based upon that area of study you're going to indicate on your application. So for example, if you're applying to our engineering, math, science, computer science programs, we do wanna see that you've taken things like biology, chemistry, physics, calculus, by the time you graduate college, uh, high school, I'm sorry, by the time you graduate high school. Things like our humanities and arts programs and business programs, we have different math and science requirements just to make sure that students are prepared at the level that they need to be to begin their studies at Stevens. You can be missing one of these classes that we like to see um, when we're evaluating your application and you would just be admitted with what we call a condition. And we just ask that you take the course the summer before you enroll at Stevens. So for example, a student might be applying to our engineering program. They've taken biology, chemistry, physics, but are in pre-calculus their senior year. You can still be offered admission to Stevens, but you would take calculus the summer before you come, just so everyone is on that same page starting their first semester at our school. We do require two recommendation letters, one from a counselor. The counselor letter is helpful in giving us that context of your high school. And we do also require a teacher letter recommendation as well. We don't have any requirements though in terms of who that teacher is. So it can be any class year you'd like or any subject area, just whomever you'd like to write on your behalf. We did go test optional as an institution for fall of 2021 due to the pandemic and the difficulties students had accessing testing. And even if they were able to access testing, it was done under challenging circumstances. And we have extended that test optional policy for fall 2022. We're looking at it on a year by year basis. So next year for fall 2022, current junior class, you will have the option to apply test optional as well. There are just two exceptions to this test optional piece though. And those are if you apply to our accelerated programs. We have the accelerated pre-med program that I mentioned briefly earlier. We do also have an accelerated pre-law program at Stevens. Those two programs do still require testing, but all other students are able to decide whether or not they'd like to submit test scores for our review. We are a school with early decision and regular decision deadlines. Early decision is a binding agreement. If you apply early decision to Stevens, you're telling us if I'm admitted, I will come. You are my number one choice school. This is where I want to be. You definitely need to be sure about your early decision school if you're applying. You're telling that school you're their first choice. They are your first choice. We have two early decision rounds at Stevens. Early decision one, you apply by November 15th, you find out by December 15th. And early decision two, you apply by January 15th, you find out by February 15th. Both early decision one and early decision two are the same in terms of the binding agreement. They just, one is just a little bit earlier and one is just a little bit later, but you're both making, through both those decision plans, you're making that same commitment to the school. We of course have regular decision as well. Most students do apply regular decision to Stevens. You can apply regular decision to as many schools as you'd like. You're not making a commitment to any one particular place at that point in time. You usually find out all your decisions at about the same time and you can decide where you'd like to go from there. Most students are applying regular decision to Stevens. That application deadline is also January 15th, but you find out by April 1st. And then you have until May 1 to let us know if you would like to enroll. Students who are interested in an accelerated pre-medicine program do need to apply by November 15th. It is a regular decision application, but you're applying by November 15th because the application review process is a bit longer. We need to review your application first. The medical school needs to review your application as well. 
So it does just take a little bit of additional time that's needed, which is why it has that earlier deadline. This is information on our class, our incoming class 2020, uh, so last fall. Last year to Stevens, we had a 53% acceptance rate for our incoming class. The test scores you see up there were, um, uh, this was a year in which we did require testing and the middle 50% was a 1320 to a 1480 on the SAT with an ACT of a 31 to a 34. As I mentioned for our fall 2021 class, they will be test optional and for our fall 2022 class, they will be test optional as well. I mentioned we don't just pull the GPA off the transcript when looking at applications, but we do provide averages. Um, and our average GPA for an admitted student was a 3.86. Think A's and B's. If you're getting A's and B's in your classes, that's what we'd like to see on your transcript. And also that you're challenging yourself in your courses. So if your school does offer honors, AP, IB level classes, we'd like to see that you're taking them. If your school doesn't offer those, we would like to know what's challenging at your particular school and we will evaluate you again within that context. And your school report and your counselor will provide us with that information. Some students also choose to take college level classes or dual enrollment courses to challenge themselves as well. It's really about finding the balance that works best for you. Taking challenging classes, but not at the expense of doing well in your classes. And that really requires you to figure out what exactly works best for you in terms of that balance and also focusing perhaps that rigor on areas of most interest to you. So for example, a computer science student may be in the areas of math and science. We also wanna see what you're doing outside the classroom. The common application does provide you with a section to list all of your activities. You also have the option to upload a resume if you'd like once you have access to your application portal. So there's plenty of opportunity for you to tell us what you do outside the classroom. Oftentimes letters of recommendation also reference your activities um, in addition to your academics. And that's really because I mentioned the clubs and organizations, the sports, the arts, um, community service options on our campus that we have for students. So we really want to make sure that we're welcoming students to Stevens who have shown that they can perform well inside the classroom, but also that they have a robust um, experience outside the classroom too. And we want students to engage in our community. So the best way we have to indicate that is to see what they've done in the community they were a part of previously. I also ask that you expand your mind about what extracurricular activities means. Yes, it's the clubs and organizations uh, that are a part of your high school, community service opportunities, arts, athletics, but also family responsibilities. If you have family responsibilities where perhaps you need to take care of a sibling after school, so then you're not involved in clubs and organizations or a part-time work experience that you need um, to pursue for, for various reasons. That counts too. We really wanna know everything that you're doing that's productive outside the classroom to really, again, round out that picture of who you are as a person and an applicant. Our review process is holistic. So we're taking all aspects um, into account. I'll also note that we do have an optional interview component. Interviews are not required, but they are an opportunity for students to tell us a little bit more about them and their interest in Stevens, and also get some of their individual questions about our school answered. Um, interviews do become available to you the summer prior to your senior year. So in that application year that you're going to apply, you can begin to request an interview and you have up until your application deadline to do so. In terms of financial aid, and you can see there the cost of attendance for the 2021-2022 academic year in terms of tuition and fees and room and board. I did mention that over 90% of our freshmen do live in on-campus housing, but students are not required to live on campus. You can certainly be a commuter student. And then in that instance, the room and board cost would not be there. Over 90% of our, of our students receive financial assistance from the institution. Students are automatically considered for merit-based aid or scholarships just by applying for admission to Stevens. The only merit-based scholarship at Stevens that requires an application is the first robotics scholarship. That's the only one. Every other merit-based scholarship you're automatically considered for. To be considered for need-based aid, students need to complete the FAFSA, which is the government form, and the CSS profile, which is a form made available through College Board. The date by which you need to submit the FAFSA and the CSS profile will depend upon the date that you choose to apply for admission. So we have certain uh, application deadlines, sorry, CSS profile and FAFSA deadlines for early decision one, early decision two, and regular decision. And that's because at Stevens, at the time you're offered admission to the institution, you receive your financial aid award. So we need to have that need-based information in, all, in order to see if you qualify for any need-based aid at the institution. A financial aid award can be made up of scholarships, which you don't have to pay back, grants, which you also don't have to pay back, work-study opportunities, which is essentially the ability for you to work up until a certain amount of earnings that you can apply back towards your cost of attendance, 
as well as loan options. Not every financial aid uh, award has these elements, but these are the categories under which aid does fall. And as I mentioned, you will have that information at the time of admission, so you can see specifically what the cost of attendance at Stevens would look like for you. The last thing I just want to note before I'll hop up onto the Q&A and answer the questions that you all have, and feel free to put those questions in there um, as we go, Stevens does also have a pre-college program for current high school students. So if you're between your sophomore and junior year of high school or junior and senior year of high school, and you're interested in uh, pursuing a pre-college program, Stevens does offer them. They will be virtual this year, and we are offering 11 different programs. The application is currently live, so you can check out our pre-college website and apply if that's something that is of interest to you. I'm gonna go ahead and look at these questions. Um, I'll read the question out loud and then answer them for you. One student asked, is co-op mandatory for engineering students? That's a great question. Co-op is not mandatory. Only engineering, computer science, science students are eligible to participate in co-op though. So students within our business school or our college of arts and letters have just the internship option. You don't have to decide whether you wanna do internships or co-ops before you get to Stevens. It's important for you to know that we have those options, um, but you don't have to decide right now or in your senior year. You get that career advisor at your start at the start of your time at Stevens, as I mentioned, and they help you navigate this choice. By the time you return for your second semester of your freshman year, you should have an idea of what you'd like to do, which choice you'd make, um, because then you do begin getting ready for and applying for those options to perhaps begin the summer between your freshman and sophomore year or that first sophomore um, fall semester. But no, co-op is not mandatory for engineering students, but about 30% of our students do participate. Someone asked what kind of student is a great fit for Stevens and what kind of student is not a great fit? This is a good question. So I mentioned a couple times throughout the presentation that idea of entrepreneurship and innovation. So definitely someone who wants to be in an environment that's really fostering that type of creativity. Um, and I think that someone who's perhaps not a good fit is someone who's not very collaborative, right? A lot of these issues that our students are learning about and problems that they're working to solve really do require collaboration. So someone who is excited about working with students um, who share that same passion as them and who have different strengths that they bring to the table is someone that we're looking for at Stevens. Someone who's really gonna come and be willing to work with lots of different students and faculty members and staff to really pursue their passions and then take that forward um, out into the workforce. Is it advantageous to do more than one recommendation letter from a teacher? I get that question a lot. Stevens is a little bit unique in that we only require one counselor and one teacher. As you go through your college search process, you'll see that um, many schools do require two letters of recommendation. So oftentimes we do get two teacher letters of recommendation just because students already have another one in their back pocket ready to go. So you can certainly send us a second teacher letter recommendation if you'd like. We will not send it back to you, we will read it. Um, but if you do go beyond the one counselor, two teacher, we ask you to just make sure that if you are adding any additional letters of recommendation, that they are ones that add something new to the conversation, uh, provide a different perspective on who you are as a person, as an applicant, because we do only technically require one counselor and one teacher. If I commit to early decision one, is there a more forgiving application process? I'm interpreting that question as, is it less selective or is there a higher acceptance rate? Um, and we are very open, it's right on our website about the fact that the acceptance rate is higher as an early decision one or two candidate. However, that should not be the reason why you choose to apply early decision to an institution. As I mentioned, it is that binding agreement. So even if the acceptance rate is slightly higher, if you are offered admission to the institution, the expectation is that you are going to enroll. So yes, again, the acceptance rate is a bit higher, um, but it should not be the driving factor in whether or not you choose to apply early decision. It should really be because you've chosen your number one school and that's where you want to be should you be offered admission. Question about, do you consider a weighted GPA? Yes, we will look at the weighted GPA if your high school does provide us with that information. Another question about early decision. If you don't get in for early decision one, can you apply for early decision two or regular? Is the answer to this the same for other universities? I don't wanna speak on behalf of, of other universities because their processes might be different, but at Stevens, you choose a decision plan, early decision one, early decision two, regular decision. You get an admissions decision for that decision plan and that is your decision for the year. So if you are offered admission, that's fine, you move forward. If you are not offered admission, early decision one, early decision two, or regular decision, you don't move into a different decision plan. 
There are instances in which a student might be deferred. So they might be deferred from early decision one to regular decision, which essentially means that the institution is not yet ready to make a decision on their application and we want to see more information. Um, that's different though, that's not a decision. That's just a deferral to another process. But if you are not offered admission, early decision one, for example, we don't consider you again, early decision two or regular decision. Typically in those instances, if a student were to remain interested in the institution, they would look into the transfer admission process for that particular school. Just a quick summary about co-op again that someone was asking about. So the two most traditional, I guess, professional experiences is that a student might have as an undergraduate are internships and cooperative education. Most schools will have some sort of internship program. Stevens does. And these are those traditional six to eight week summer experiences between your academic years. Some schools also offer co-op. Some schools require co-op. Some schools don't. Stevens does not. But that's definitely a question to ask of every institution. Co-op is a program that you're gaining professional practice, but you're doing it in such a way that you're, you're taking off a semester of school to work. So at Stevens, the way co-op works is you're pursuing your first year and your fifth year in the traditional way, taking your fall and spring classes, and then the three years in between, you're alternating every other semester between going to school full-time and working full-time. So it just depends on what the student wants to pursue in terms of timeline of undergraduate work, because it does take five years to complete your eight semesters of undergraduate work in co-op. Um, or if a student wants a more extended experience, right? Three to four months at a company is a lot different than six to eight weeks. Um, you get to have three of those distinct experiences throughout the co-op program. Student asked question about AP credit. Do we give credit? Yes, we give, AP, we give credit for AP exams, um, IB exams as well. On our website, we have an accepted student page, which is actually open to everyone. It's not a locked page. Anyone can access it. And on that accepted student page, it does list, it gives a chart, uh, a graph um, of the AP and IB credit that we award. So it will list which AP exam you do need to have a score of a four or a five on the exam and then the equivalency at Stevens and the number of credits you would receive. I did mention dual enrollment earlier, so I'll just touch on that as well. Um, we will also evaluate any college courses you've taken for credit. That process happens though the summer between you confirming your enrollment at Stevens and starting at the institution. And what we need is a copy of your college transcript, a copy of the syllabus for the class you've taken, and you also fill out a credit evaluation form so we just know which classes we're looking at. And then those are evaluated by our faculty members on a case-by-case -case basis to determine if there's an equivalency at Stevens. There's not a chart in the same way that there is for the AP or IB classes, but we will review college courses for credit. A freshman can bring in up to 30 credits at Stevens that freshman year, which is about a year's worth of coursework. Um, Stevens does have um, ROTC programs, but they're not on our campus. We have partnerships um, with New Jersey Institute of Technology as well as Seton Hall. So students can pursue ROTC at Stevens, but not um, physically on our campus. We partner with those other institutions. Someone asked about what if a guidance counselor at a high school has a lot of students that they work with and it might be tough for them to get a good letter of recommendation. We do get that question often because um, that sometimes is a concern of students who might attend um, public schools that again perhaps have larger groups of students that their counselors are working with. In those instances, I think that oftentimes students will send that other teacher recommendation that I was referring to. So they do get another letter of recommendation on file for someone who perhaps can speak more specifically um, to them and their academic talents and interests but we don't hold it against a student if their counselor letter of recommendation is just only able to write a, a short bit about them. Um, typically counselors do note um, their, um, the number of students that they work with in their, in their letter if they aren't able to write a more extensive letter. And we're also able to see the size of your class in the profile. So we have all that information to understand the, the, again, the context in which the letter of recommendation is written. So if you do feel as though perhaps your guidance counselor letter is not going to be the strongest um, reflection of you or, or give us a lot of information, feel free to send an additional letter of recommendation. We are absolutely happy um, to review that. A student asked, um, what, would, what if someone got accepted into the binding agreement but didn't end up enrolling? So we want students to enter into the early decision agreement with the understanding that it, again, it is a binding agreement. If you are admitted, you will enroll. Um, if a student is unable to enroll at the institution due to financial reasons, so if they, we do have a net price calculator on our website that we do ask students to review before applying early decision because those tools, and every school has the net price calculator, those tools are meant to assist you with understanding what a financial aid award might look like 
for you at a particular institution. So we do want them to go into the early decision agreement having looked into that process. Um, but if when you are offered admission and you at Stevens, and if you receive a financial aid award that does not make the experience possible, you can request to be released from the early decision agreement and our Dean would review that request. If you do request to be released from an early decision agreement, your um, application process with Stevens ends, you're not able to enroll in the fall and you go on and look at other institutions. If you are admitted as an early decision student, submit your deposit, you then have to withdraw your applications from all other institutions because again, you are committing to our school. If it is then determined at a later point in time that you have not withdrawn your applications to other institutions and you are accepting an offer of admission um, to, other, to another school, there would be another conversation with, with our admissions team. Another student asked, are the majority of engineering co-op opportunities in New York City? So given our location, both proximity to New York, as well as just in New Jersey, there's this New York metro area, there are lots of opportunities. A lot of internship co-op, those professional experiences are happening in this area that we, that we are located. However, it is not exclusive to that area. So we certainly do have students from other parts of the country, perhaps the West Coast, down in the DC area, up in the Boston area, who maybe want to return home for their summer internship or their cooperative education experience. So we do assist students with getting these experiences across the country. Some students have these experiences abroad as well. So it is more open than just the New York metro area, but I will say um, that is where it is concentrated. Um, and again, it goes back to having that conversation with your career advisor and asking and having them understand what it is that you want out of these professional experiences and where exactly you want to be so that they can assist you with finding those opportunities. There are certainly, for example, in the tech space, different pockets throughout the country. So students might find um, professional opportunities elsewhere for sure. Any other questions that are coming through? I did go through all the ones so far that have come and I know I do have a few extra moments if anyone wants to type any extra ones for me to, to answer. Okay, awesome, got a few extra ones. Can you live at Stevens during a co-op? Great question, yes. So if you are on your co-op, you can still be in Stevens housing. You're not paying tuition for the semester that you're on co-op because you're not taking classes. But if you were in our housing, you would still pay a uh, room and board at Stevens. So yes, you can continue to get your housing through the institution if you are doing co-op. And of course, your co-op is in the New York City, Hoboken area. In terms of the countries for study abroad, it is vast. Um, we are all over the place, Asia, Europe. Um, we have on our website an actual, we have on our website, I'll call it a database where you can essentially indicate the area of the world that you're interested in studying. And it will show you different universities that we have affiliations with. This is also open to anyone. So anyone can go onto our website, stevens.edu, type in the search study abroad, and it will take you to that page where you can see um, different places around the world that our students have studied. So there's lots of options there. Had a question about robotics program. There's not a specific robotics major, but many students who have area of interest have an area of interest within that find themselves within the mechanical engineering space. We do also have robotics in terms of extracurricular activities. Um, so you can join a robotics um, club organization once on campus. Question about expecting the campus to be open again for bus uh, business for visits. We've been open for business the whole time, but for visits specifically. So right now, Stevens is only open to, for, from a campus visit perspective, a tour perspective to admitted students. Um, our admitted students receive their decisions in mid-March, they have to decide by mid-May. So due to the constraints that we have around how many students can be on tour at a particular time, it's just um, currently admitted students and also from the states that New Jersey allows travel to and from. So that's New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. Starting May 3rd, we will open up again to um, current juniors. So those students who are considering applying for fall of 2022, again, to those states, from those states, I should say, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, and Delaware. As conditions improve, um, we will remain, we will continue to reopen slowly and incrementally um, for folks. So do continue to check our website, specifically the Visit Campus section of our website, um, because we're constantly providing updates there. Also, as it stands currently, if you are eligible to register for a tour and visit campus, it's just one student and one guest. So you are limited to just bringing that one guest for you. 
Question about subject tests. Does Stevens require subject tests? We do not require subject tests. Um, we've never required subject tests for our engineering programs. Previously, we've required subject tests for the accelerated pre-medicine program, but we did not require the subject test this past year. So that's not really something you need to take um, to complete your application process at Stevens. Any other questions? Perfect. What year of high school is considered most heavily in the application admissions process? So everything is considered um, all from your start of high school all the way up through the coursework that you choose your senior year. And also we do require your final high school transcript for those who are admitted and decide to enroll. So even, you know, you don't stop in your senior year, you keep pursuing um, the courses you're taking and doing well in those classes uh, up until graduation. What I will say is that we do look at trends, right? So sometimes when students go to high school, it starts off a bit slower, right? It's, an, it's a new pace, it's a new expectation, and sometimes students don't do as well that freshman year, but continue to improve over time. That's one thing, right? If we're looking at a GPA, we wanna see that it's getting better each year or staying consistently um, strong. Also, we're looking at the same in terms of rigor, right? When you come into high school, you're not taking a ton of AP classes initially, you're starting off, maybe taking some honors classes, doing well in those courses, and then adding on that rigor as you go. So there's not one year that's more or less important. We're looking at the whole thing, but we're looking to see how you've built year over year and improving your performance and improving the strength of, of, your, of your rigor throughout that time. And if there is anything on your transcript that you know, you'd like to explain a bit further. Um, you do have an additional information section on your application. It's not an, it's not a, like a personal statement section. You can write about whatever you'd like. So sometimes students do choose to use that space to talk us through a part of their transcript a little bit more um, if they'd like. But also what I wanna emphasize again is that recommended coursework at Stevens. So definitely if you haven't yet had the opportunity to go to the how to apply section of our website and check out the recommended coursework to see what it is that we're looking for in terms of the math and science preparation based upon your particular area of interest. Where are, the, where are most of the students from? So about half of our students do come from New Jersey um, and many students also come from the surrounding states. Uh, some of the ones that I just mentioned when talking about who could visit campus, New York, um, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, um, students from the Mid-Atlantic region as well as, as the New England region. We did have um, about 47 states in our accepted student group this, this year. So students are applying from all over the country um, and enrolling um, met over 30 countries represented as well. So there are students coming from across the country and around the world to Stevens, but many of our students do come from New Jersey, although we are a private institution um, and there's no difference as you saw in tuition between in-state and out-of-state students. Any final questions before we have to wrap up for the evening? Okay, well, I really, oops, sorry, one more came in right when I was about to wrap it up. Saying a similar question about high school that I mentioned and which year is most important. Really put your best effort in every single year. We want to see improvement over time. And if there is anything on your application from a transcript perspective that you'd like to explain a little bit further, do feel free to use that um, additional information section um, of the application. So thank you again so much for joining me this evening. I really do appreciate you taking the time to learn more about Stevens. Um, continue to check the Visit Campus section of our website for more opportunities um, as it comes to visiting campus, taking tours, um, and hopefully we'll be able to continue to expand those opportunities in the coming months for students interested in learning more. We do also have different virtual opportunities that we offer um, each, each week as well, and also a virtual tour that you can feel free to check out too. My staff is also broken up by region. So based upon where you're from, you do have an admissions counselor assigned to you. So feel free to reach out at any point in time to that counselor to get any of your individual questions answered about Stevens. We're also happy to connect you with current students or faculty members if you'd like to learn more from those folks. Um, and of course, me as well. I'm a great resource if you have any questions along the way. want to thank you Megan, for presenting all that great information about Stevens. And I want to thank everyone for joining us for this session. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted over the next couple of days. Be sure to sign up for additional ones if you've not done so already at the same place you signed up for this one. 
And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording. So if there's anything you want to review or uh, reinforce in that was presented tonight, you can do that. You can also find all of the other session recordings. That website, strivescan.com slash cache. Again, those will be available within about a week. Once again, I want to thank our presenter for sharing that great information. And thank you all for joining us. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.